Hi, welcome back to the series on paint.net. Um, in this series, in this actual video, or in this video, uh, what we're going to do is actually open up an image and uh, work with uh, an image for the first time. So here we're displayed with our user interface. And basically, uh, in this uh, user interface, up here we have our menu bar again. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up an image. If we click open, that goes to our open file dialog. Uh, what we can also do is we can go to uh, open recent, which allows us to open up an image that we've opened recently. But here, in the open dialog, it opens up our open uh, uh, file dialog. And here we have the options, like in any Windows program, where we can uh, display how, if we want to display it by details, um, uh, thumbnails, uh, icon, or icons, or whatever. Here is uh, basically our folder list where we expose our directory, where we can go to a particular directory or whatever. Um, and uh, here further, we have navigation tools on the side where we can uh, open up uh, other, or we have further navigation options. Here we can control what kind of image we want to open. So for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the one that we did in the last video called church.tif. We click on that. Uh, church.tif is displayed. Now, if I made a mistake in the last video, here is the name of the, um, uh, of the uh, image that we have open. And here is actually the display size. It's not, uh, that, that is the display size. So if we open up another image, we can have multiple images open. <clears throat> Let's open up cart, and uh, what we can do is, if you notice, we have cart here. Uh, this changes if we go to church. This information in the actual uh, title bar will change. So we can close that and go back to church. Now, once we have church open, uh, like let's say that we want to scale it, or I mean, do some cropping. Now, um, please, I'm going to just kind of crop and. I'm not going to worry about what I'm cropping. I'm just going to show how it operates. So if I click on this rectangular selection tool right here, and uh, like let's say that I select the area that I want to crop to, and if I go up to image, I can say crop to selection. Okay, now what that will do is that will make my image, it will crop to the selection I've selected. And also notice that um, our history dialog, this is the history of the commands, that we have gone to. So if I select open image, um, that will place me right back uh, to where I did before I did the crop. Or what I can do is I can go to the rectangular select. I can go any, to any of these steps. Now if I go to, like let's say open image, if I um, put another command in, the commands below open image will be lost. Um, so that's an important notation. So now we have this image open. Now the first thing that we can do is we can come up to our adjustments layer. And like let's say that we want to uh, get into, like let's say our levels command. They have a great levels command on here. Here is our input uh, histogram. That's the histogram um, as it was, as it was uh, before uh, we made any adjustments. Now, if we make adjustments and come back into this, it will be uh, at the point that where we actually came into this particular tool. So if we want to here, what we can do is we can make corrections in our histogram. Uh, this is our, um, you know, our midpoint or how the gray tones are represented. And if you'll notice, my output histogram will now reflect um, what uh, changes I have made. So if I pull this down, um, you'll notice that we have a very different um, histogram than we did on our input histogram. So I'll say OK. Now if I go back into my adjustments again, um, and we'll go into levels, if you'll notice, my histogram is um, as with the changes that I have made. Now again, in my history window, um, I can go back to crop to selection. Okay, what it will do is restore the image and basically take me back to that crop to selection. Uh, in addition to that, 
I assume that we all know what a histogram is. Um, if not, um, I have other videos that explain it. We can go into our curves tool. And our curves tool allows us to change uh, basically um, our brightness and our contrast in much finer detail. Uh, what we also have here is we have hue and saturation levels and so on and so forth. So when we get the image exactly the way that we want it, uh, what we can do is we can come up here to our file and we can go into our um, uh, save dialog or save as is if we save it it's going to replace uh, the image entirely. If we I put save as uh, we can save it as a new version. So instead of church.tif, we'll call this church, uh, church5.tif. That will save it. And we have saved church5.tif um, with our new corrections. Uh, so that's basically what we do. And now we can close our image. So if we go back to open, if you'll notice, we have church5.tif now. And we can open that up and uh, either do further revisions or what we can do is, uh, or further corrections, or uh, we can uh, save it as a new version. But anyways, that's how you open an image and you work with an image. There's going to be a lot of information here on paint.net. As I did 20-some uh, videos on GIMP, uh, this, there's going to probably be a similar number of videos on uh, paint.net that's going to go through all the features. Um, what I might do in the next video or two is further describe the histogram and the curves for those who uh, might need it. But uh, And then we're going to go through each one of the tools. Please visit my site. There's a lot of information there. Uh, there are a lot more videos. Um, and I thank you for watching. That site is www.foto linq.com. And thank you very much for watching the video. And have a nice day.